Okay, <clears throat> so yesterday we were talking about the uh, one uh, meridional cross section, and we were talking about different uh, features of the uh, of the density field and also of the as as well as the temperature and salinity, because we know uh, um, you should know that the uh, temperature and salinity, which are uh, uh, um, variable of states of the seawater they are so they are they are uh, connected with the, with the with the density by the equation the equation of state this equation state of, of state simply that says that the density depends on temperature and salinity in what sense it depends on temperature and salinity uh, and so uh, it is approximated by a linear equation where we have a, a, a coefficient of the of the dependence of temp uh, density on the temperature and on the salinity, where the the coefficient, uh, where the coefficient on the dependence of temperature is negative because the higher is the temperature, the lower is the density, and the uh, coefficient on the, of the dependence of density on salinity is negative. The higher is the uh, uh, sorry positive. The higher is the salinity, the higher is the density. So, and uh, this is how this is as far as the equation of states. However, we approximate this by a linear equation, uh, by a simple linear equation. But the coefficients of uh, of uh, contraction or or expansion of uh, of density with respect to the temperature and salinity are de de depending on temperature and salinity itself. Therefore, this equation, the, this dependence is not really. Uh, uh, linear. Anyhow, uh, if we go ahead, this is. Let's see how how the uh, how the salinity. Uh, what is the, the the distribution of salinity? But uh, at this time, uh, uh, again, an attitude north south. Uh, uh, no, the, sorry, is the, uh, uh, yes, north-south. And uh, it shows the different features of the salinity with respect to the density and, and, and obviously with respect to the temperature. Uh, why? Uh, if you look at the salinity, salinity is a more conservative property of the seawater because it's simply, uh, it, it simply depends on, uh, on freshwater uh, on the freshwater uh, eddy, or the, the, the uh, and so it practically, if you exclude the surface, then the uh, then the, 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 the salinity is much more conservative than than the temperature. And here, for example, this is one uh, one section near 25 west, and uh, what you can see is the. Uh, let me see. Is this. What you can see is the uh, the high uh, the the uh, sorry the scale is not here, but the numbers you can see is the uh, it's the relatively high salinity in this area here, and uh, we know that the, the the higher is the salinity, the lower is the density. Okay, but that that would mean that that this part here is heavier than this part here but that's not true it's uh, it's this here here there comes into the play in the, the game uh, temperature which is much higher and therefore keeps this water column vertically uh, stable because the surface density due to the higher temperature is lower than than in deeper layers although the salinity is uh, higher in the sea surface and uh, what what else can we can see? We can see this uh, this protruding of the uh, of the of the high salinity water. How we can interpret this? We have this protruding of the high salinity water in the in the depth at the depth of about uh, thousand meters. And uh, in order to interpret this, we have to know some something about the the, the obviously first of all geography. And second, on some features. 
here is the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, what is happening is that this, the, the, the uh, sorry, in the, at this at this level is the, the, the typically the the, uh, the high the, the salinity water coming from the Mediterranean spreads at around thousand meters in the in the in the in the Atlantic, and then this this is really the source of the salty water we have seen before. When we were looking at the horizontal distribution of salinity, that the Mediterranean has a higher salinity than the rest, the rest of the ocean. Therefore, the, the, the Mediterranean is a source of this, of this uh, salty water for the, for the Atlantic. Why is this so? This is because evaporation minus precipitation for the, for the Mediterranean is positive. It's higher, evaporation is higher than precipitation, therefore it keeps the it keeps the salinity in the Mediterranean higher than it for the rest uh, for the rest of the ocean. So this is kind of uh, how we can uh, how we can uh, interpret these things. And here, what is another thing is the uh, is you can see these uh, the lines of equal salinity, which is called isohalines. Isohalines are lines of equal uh, salinity. Isohalines are lines of equal salinity, and they are very, very dense here in this this specific part. You can see. So that means that here we have the vertical, strong vertical salinity gradient. The strong vertical salinity gradient is, as you remember, we call it halocline. So that means the high vertical uh, gradients of salinity, which separates the halocline separates the surface. Salty, salty layer from the deeper from the deeper layers. Okay, so this is just uh, um, just to show you how this uh, how we can interpret this. Uh, uh, just to to continue along these lines, I would like to give you some uh, some closer example of uh, of. Uh, we are in the agriculture this time, yes. So this is temperature depend uh, sorry, salinity dependent on that as you, you said that the surface is more saline. Uh, does it mean that as you modify the salinity decreases? Not necessarily. It depends it depends on the where and whether where is the source of high salinity high saline water. If the salinity if the highly saline water is at the same time of a lower temperature, then obviously the the uh, the water the, the water density will be high and then it will go to deeper layers. If on the other hand, if the high salinity water is at the same time high temperature, it will keep stay at the surface. So everything depends. In that case, the the temperature comes into the game. Okay, so it's not necessarily. It's not like a, in the case of the temperature. In the temperature, we know that that the, the surface. There is a higher temperature in deeper layers, but this is simply because the source for the heat is at the surface. Okay. On the other hand, uh, uh, you will see in these examples, you will see that the uh, that uh, typically, if the temperature difference is between the water, between the low salinity water or high salinity water, and and the ambient water is not. Uh, is not big, then the uh, fresh water keeps at the surface, and this and salty water goes into the deeper layer. But this is uh, this everything depends in that case on the what temperature does. For example, this is the uh, this is this this transect here. What we have done is that in different seasons we have done the uh, the, the cross section. Would you move it? Yeah. You are uh, in your place. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. Okay. But you are a PhD student, right? Yes. Okay, good. And your name is? Rene. Rene. Okay, you are Rene. I wasn't studying. Yes, 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 but I haven't seen you yesterday. The day before yesterday, you haven't been here. Okay. 
And you were asking me for extra literature. Yes. Okay, I will uh, send it to you. I, get, I didn't forget. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I just, uh, so what we have done is in the in four seasons, we have done the cross section here, which is, uh, which is this northern part of the Adriatic, in order to, to, to look at the evolution of the, of the vertical distribution of temperature. You will see later how these temperature and salinity goes together and how they interplay in order to define the vertical distribution of density, or what, as we call it, vertical stratification. In uh, spring season, you can see that the surface is kind of have a, you, uh, here we have only 50 meter depth. So uh, in the surface we have this uh, relatively high temperature, not very strong vertical gradient because in the surface we have 16 and the bottom we have 12 degrees. So it's a, it's a season when uh, uh, the, the seasonal heating started, starts. If you go to summer season, then obviously due to the high surface heating, you can, you can hear the much larger differences in temperature between surface and bottom. And we have here 24 and we have 14. So we have up to 10 degrees differences and only 50 meter depth. And uh, you can see that there is, a, there is this surface mixed layer, which is due to the wind influence and, and where the temperature is more or less constant. Going to autumn, we have increase of the frequency of the wind and strength of the wind, and then vertical mixing causes the, the, the thermocline, which is here at about 20 meters, deepens and goes to 40 meters, and then you have the whole uh, layer from surface to 40 meter vertically mixed. The thermocline is only at, uh, at the 40 meters. And finally, in winter, what is happening is that the isotherms, the line of equal temperature, is almost vertical. Vertical. You have to keep in mind that we have uh, exaggerated the vertical scale with respect to the horizontal scale. So vertical is really not the right, uh, right uh, expression because. Uh, because the, we are exaggerated the vertical scale. So in this exaggeration, exaggerated vertical scale, the isotherms are vertical, are vertical. And you can see that there is this, uh, there is the, the gradient of the, of the temperature from the, from the coast toward the open sea. Why so? Because uh, that, in this season, the, 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 the land is very cold and then you have the, the colder water close to the surf, close to the coast, and warmer uh, the open sea. Another thing what is uh, also, or what we should know, you know, here comes into the play our knowledge of the oceanography of the area in order to be able to interpret this. We should know that here there is a, a freshwater source, there is a river here coming into, the, into here, this is a poor river, a major river of the Adriatic. Therefore, we should find the fresh water or low salinity water uh, 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 going uh, along the coast. And uh, we will see this clearly from the, from the salinity because this is, and this is, uh, this is how, how the salinity is a uh, indicator of the presence of the sources of the fresh water. And in fact, if you go, if you go to the same transit, but on the, in the salinity scale, in the salinity, what you can see is the, in all these situations, the low salinity, which is around 30, 30 parts per thousand, you remember that the mean, the mean salinity of the Mediterranean is like a 38, and here it is 32 parts per thousand or 32 grams per kilogram and this is present all the time so that means that once this fresh water exits from here it turns right and flows along the coast here it turns right because of the rotation of the earth we will be later on we'll be seeing later on the uh, the uh, the how the Coriolis force how the uh, rotation influences the uh, 
the, uh, the, the circulation in general. And uh, in, the, in the spring season, you can see that the, uh, there are slight, slight stratification salinity, not very, very important. And, uh, and then there is this strong, uh, strong, uh, um, uh, strong uh, plume, we call it plume of the fresh water coming from, from the river. If you go to a, a summer season, summer season <coughs> shows slightly, shows the, uh, shows that this fresh water which comes into the, uh, from the, from the river, it's not only that it flows along the coast, but it spreads also horizontally, having, showing, keeping the, the, the high line here present in the, at the open sea as well. So you can, you have a kind of a two layer system where the fresh water spreads over the uh, over the over the, the entire entire Adriatic <coughs> then <coughs> if you go to the to the autumn season <coughs> the, uh, the, the 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 wind influence destroys this uh, this layer here mixed it vertically uh, the, uh, the, the 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 freshwater plume remains there where is it even also it's even stronger because there is a there is more more uh, rain, as you can see. This more rain during this season, and then <coughs> and then the, you have the, sal the salinity even lower. <coughs> in winter, as in the case of the temperature, the the the, the water column is vertically mixed from the point of your salinity with the uh, with this plume, fresh water plume. Uh, pressed against against the coastline because of, of this of this vertical mixing. So this is how we have the seasonal evolution of uh, of uh, of the, uh, the uh, of the characteristics of the water in a, uh, in a function of the vertical mixing of atmospheric forcing or uh, on the um, or uh, uh, on the fresh water inflow and, uh, and uh, influences of the coast. Uh, the, the, let's uh, have a look at the, what is happening in a deeper, in deeper part, deepest part, deeper part, and where we have, for example, in this transit here, the depth goes up to 100 meters. So certainly the, uh, the, the situation will be slightly different in the sense that the vertical mixing will not be as strong over the entire water column as it is in a 50 on a 50 meter depth and uh, what is here this is the temperature and you can see that there is a slight thermo uh, thermocline due to the beginning of the of the uh, of the seasonal heating this uh, uh, spring for for the from the oceanographic point of view spring is uh, uh, March, April, May. So, uh, so this this is the that is how it looks like in a spring. In a uh, summer, you can see that there is again the the thermocline, very strong thermocline at about 20 meter, which separates the surface mixed layer from the rest of the of the area. The uh, at the depth. At the deeper layers, at the, around 100 meters, you can see that the temperature practically remains the, uh, the constant over the entire year. So that means that this surface heating really does reach not more than 100 meters. This surface heating or or wind-induced mixing do not do not uh, reaches the, the the more than uh, than uh, 60, 70 meters, where the the, the temperature shows the seasonal, the seasonal variability. And uh, so again, the, we, have, uh, we have a clear thermocline, which is here at 20 meters, here is around 40 meters. The wind mixing pushes this thermocline down. And then finally, what is happening in the summertime is the, uh, is the vertically, in the wintertime is the vertically mixed water column. The uh, um, so this is how the temperature was. It is a deeper transect. Yes. Maybe try to switch the lights. So 
you want to switch the light completely I'm afraid that you will you will you will fall asleep it's better now okay yes ah because it was this one is it yes. makes a difference yes 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 okay so this is there go to the salinity and see what is the uh, what is what happens with salinity in, uh, in this in this area which is first of all this uh, this transect here is uh, uh, is not so close to the source of the fresh water and what we would we would uh, we could expect is the lower salinity the higher salinity in the coastal area in fact the the, uh, the salinity in the coastal area is around 38 it it, well, it used to be 32 in the upper in, the, in, the, in this upper transect because it's very close to the to the <coughs> to the um, you can see in the springtime is huge water mass is uh, of the almost constant salinity in the summertime in the summertime there is a, uh, a high uh, strong halocline which is uh, which is uh, due to the spreading of this fresh water over the Adria over the the entire area and then the wind wind mixing which pushes the color line in deeper layers in autumn there is a there is more or less a similar situation to to to, to this one except that uh, that the that the color line is uh, here uh, um, uh, limited to this specific to the part of the of the water column next to the coast and finally Salinity in winter is, uh, shows the completely vertically mixed water run from the surface to the bottom, okay? So you, have, you can see this parallel uh, changes of both salinity and uh, temperature in a function on one hand on the sources of the fresh water which doesn't influence the temperature but do influence, does influence the salinity and on the other hand uh, the importance of the wind mixing and uh, surface surface heating. Let's just cross a little bit uh, without uh, doing too much, uh, without having too much, uh, without stuff too much. But this is this is interesting in the sense that here, this is the this goes here. Uh, this transit is again is now at a depth of about 200 meter, 220 meters. So it's deeper than the one before. What is interesting here, what appears, a new feature which appears here is this, this cold water tongue, which is around 100 meters present in all these, in all these situations. What is this thing? Now, uh, in order to, to interpret this, we have to uh, know something about the, uh, obviously, we have to know something about the functioning of the system about the meteorology, about the climate of the system. The Northern Adriatic is very cold. You, can, you, will, see, you will experience this next week. And uh, uh, the, what that means? That means that the, the water is cooled during the winter time. By cooling, there is, as we said before, from the equations of states of the seawater, <laughs> the lower is the temperature, the higher is the, the, the higher is the density so what is happening if you cool the surface water it sinks down mixes vertically and then spreads at the bottom uh, uh, at the bottom layer and uh, this water then flows southward in the bottom layer but it doesn't flow uh, on the eastern coast it flows on the western coast flows in the leaving the coast on its right because of the of the earth rotation so this water then accommodates at around 100 meter depth flows flows along the coast and flows southward and then you can see these bulbs of the cold water which is present in all the seasons so during the winter time this water is formed and this water is very cool doesn't uh, lose its heat <laughs> and flows continuously southward even during the summertime because during the summertime it's separated from the 
from the surface by, by the thermocline, by the surface mixed layer, therefore it doesn't lose too much of the heat. And you can see it's present all the time, so it flows southward. In the upper layer, the situation happens is more or less like it's in uh, on other, other two transects. You can see that there is a weak thermocline in spring, strong thermocline in a summer, a deeper but still present thermocline in, 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 in autumn, and then practically the complete absence of the thermocline in, uh, in the winter time. And uh, so the evolution about this specific feature, which is the bulb of the cold water, is the same as in other two transects, and uh, except for this specific feature, which is, uh, which is very important, you will see later to what extent and what is the importance of this dense water formation or the sinking of water and mixing of water during the, the, the winter time. Let's, uh, let's see the salinity, whether there is a signal of this, uh, this uh, cold water bulb in, uh, in salinity. The response is yes, there is uh, some, some signs of this water which is, <coughs> which is seen from the lower salinity than the ambient water. Why is lower salinity? Because northern Adriatic is generally uh, less salty than, a, than a, in the other part. Being less salty, the water which is mixed, vertically mixed there, is of lower salinity than the water which, which is present there that it comes to. So here, for example, it has uh, salinity lower than the central part here, is salinity lower than the central part also here and here. So the, uh, the, this bulb of cold, relatively cold water is at the same time of a lower salinity. But this water doesn't go into the surface, although it's lower salinity. It stays at the bottom, it stays below the surface because it has a very low temperature. So the temperature keeps this density high and keeps the this water in the deeper in the deeper layers. A, uh, again, the, the rest is more or less uh, in the upper layer. It's more or less uh, similar. We have here again the uh, especially during the uh, during the autumn season we have this uh, this uh, tongue of uh, fresh water which comes up north from uh, from the Po River. Okay, so, and finally, the last one. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Is it right to say that also the fact that the bathymetry is very shallow may change how this uh, heavy water forms? Because I'm thinking if uh, winds cool down uh, the surface layer, in the places where the bathymetry is shallow, it's easier to cool down, cool down the whole column. Yes. So sure, sure. The, this is the, because, but you will see, we will see later that there are two mechanisms of the cooling down and forming of dense water. One is vertical mixing in very the shallow areas like the northern Adriatic. The other one is the vertical convection, I, which I will be uh, uh, talking to you um, in, a, in a minute. And uh, see, the, the last one, the last transit, which is the opening of the, the, the inlet between the Adriatic and Ionian, is uh, deep, around 1,000 meter. And uh, what we can see here, that, the, uh, that the, 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 the main feature, what we have seen at the transit before, not the, not the transit to this one here, is that the feature one feature which is present in all these situations is this, uh, you can see this bulb of the, uh, of the cold water. This bulb of the cold water means that there is an outflow of this water which is formed not only in the northern Adriatic, you will see later in the, in the southern Adriatic as well, and it flows southward and stays at around 800, 800 meters and flows southward Along, always along the, 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 west, the western coast. And uh, the, uh, at the same time, you can see that there are situations in which 
there is a relatively cold water in the surface as well, which is associated to the low salinity water, which flows all along the, now we can see that all along the, the western coast, there is a flow of this fresh water, which during the winter is, uh, is relatively, relatively cold. Uh, the rest is more or less the repetition of what we have said before, the slide thermocline, a uh, thermocline, uh, uh, the summer strong thermocline in spring, this is the winter, and this is the, uh, uh, this is the, the, the autumn this time, this is a little bit changed uh, the order of the presentation, but anyhow, so you can see this, uh, this uh, feature, the, the main feature, what is kept all the time present are these, this feature and this uh, relatively low temperature coastal, coastal water, which is on the, in the salinity is, uh, in the salinity is uh, also uh, clear the presence of this, relatively clear presence of this fresh water and cold water outflow, which is this thing here, See here, here, and here. So the uh, the, the feature is uh, present in both salinity and temperature because that means that the, the Adriatic is uh, uh, discharging the, the 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 cold water and at the same time relatively fresh water. So that means the Adriatic is is uh, uh, the source of this relatively fresh water for the for the for the rest of the Mediterranean or Ionian Sea, as we are talking about. The salinity, the salinity has this, uh, obviously we have, we have to take into consideration that we are now in a thousand meters, so we have the halocline which is present all the time, and where the, 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 the fresh water is present, the fresher water is present uh, in the surface, but not because the, there is a source of the fresh water in the surface layer which spreads over the entire entire uh, Adriatic transit, but because of the entrance, because of the presence of this tongue of the of the high salinity water. How we can explain that? We can explain this in a simple way. Along this part here, this is the western part, we have the outflow in the surface layer, in the deeper layer, but at the same time somehow the compensation has to has to take place. The compensation is uh, simply the inflow of this high salinity water from south, because the southern part of the southern the, the Ionian Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean are saltier than than the Adriatic. And this water, which enters, is clearly seen from this tongue of the high high salinity water. So the, uh, the, in this case, the, the halof line is not due to the, to, the, to the extent of the fresh water from a source of the fresh water, but because of the presence of this tongue of high salinity water in an uh, in intermediate layer. So these are, this, this, these are, this, this is how we can reason, we, what, this is the reasoning we have uh, done simply based on uh, horizontal distribution, of, vertical distribution of temperature, salinity, and knowing some climate, climatic features of the basin we are talking about. So, in order to, uh, in order to, to uh, be able to interpret this, we have to know number of, we have to have number of information, uh, uh, not only on the oceanography, but also on the climatolo climatological characteristics of the of the area. Um, a, uh, see, okay. Uh, uh, another thing is that now we will come to to the to the specific question of, of this vertical mixing, winter vertical mixing and uh, dense water formation, which are very important processes, not only, not only at, the, at the level of the Adriatic Sea, but, but it's very, they are very important from the point of view of the World Ocean. You will see later on that dense water formation is the motor 
is an engine of the global circulation of the of the world ocean. And uh, in order to um, in order to uh, um, to illustrate this, uh, how we can get this uh, the idea whether the, the vertical mixing uh, came into the play or not, we can we can understand that looking simply at the. Uh, looking simply at the vertical transect in an area where we uh, expect that the dense water formation or the vertical mixing takes place. So if you look at these four winter situations, what you would say? You would say that, the, that here, this area here, this uh, specific year, we have had the, the huge part of the water column vertically mixed. Okay? This happened is in March, and you can see that the vertically mixed water column comes to about 800 meters, and everything, all this huge part is vertically mixed. Why is vertically mixed? It's vertically mixed, we will see later, because of the winter heat lo losses and, the, and uh, due to, the, on one hand, the wind influence, and on the other hand, simply due to the, uh, to the processes at the LC interface, where, by which the, the ocean loses the heat <coughs> and uh, by losing the heat lowering the lowering the temperature and causing the, the vertical the vertical mixing in uh, other transects you can see that the, the, the vertically mixed area is uh, is almost is almost absent and uh, if you look at the uh, this one here uh, this is the same thing, but the salinity. Okay, you can see that the salinity essentially shows the same thing. That here, in this specific year where we have seen from the temperature that there is, uh, it's vertically mixed. In also in salinity is vertically mixed. So the, the water column, the water is vertically mixed, mixing their uh, variables of state. Here, for example, the vertical mixing almost didn't appear, and so forth. Okay, so this is this is shown. This is this I show you this uh, just uh, to make a short climb, climb qualitative introduction into the into the vertical mixing, to which we will be uh, talking in a minute. Um, and uh, let's see. <coughs> Let me see whether we can. No, it's better maybe to, that we go. To this, to in this order. Uh, now we will pass to the first, uh, some introductory part to the to the to the, uh, to the equations, basic equation of fluid motion, and we have uh, five principles of the conservation uh, laws, which are which are uh, which are leading to to the. Uh, basic equation of fluid motion. First one is conservation of mass, which leads to the continuity equation, so that means that we cannot lose or gain the mass. This is, uh, for example, what I, would, uh, I told you a few minutes ago, that if we have the, uh, the, the Adriatic losing the water due to the outflow of this fresh water in the surface and in the deeper layer, has to be some, some inflow of water which keeps the, the, the volume conserved. So this is the conservation of mass, conservation of energy, conservation of heat, and this is the heat budget. We, were <laughs> we have been talking about the heat budget, and we know that the heat budget is the, the, the heat budget has to be conserved. Conservation of the mechanical energy that leads to wave equation. We will see that there, is a, there are uh, some analytical solution of, uh, <coughs> of the of the equations of motion, which gives us uh, the solution, the waves, wave-like solution, which are which are a good approximation of some phenomena which are happening in the ocean. <coughs> then we have a conservation momentum, which leads to a momentum navier Stokes equation. You know, all of you know what is this. And then finally, <coughs> conservation of angular momentum, which leads to the conservation of the vorticity, which is another important, uh, uh, another important uh, uh, concept 
is that since we are at the, at the rotating Earth, rotating system, the conservation of vorticity is an important, uh, an important principle. So these are the conservation laws which are leading to basic equation, basic uh, equations of fluid motion. And uh, in the, in the uh, uh, we have to consider the forces which are in geophysical fluid dynamics. So we have the gravity force, which gives rise to pressure gradient, buoyancy, and tides. So the 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 the, the, um, the, gra the pressure gradient comes from the differences in pressure between different parts of the world ocean, or different density between different parts of the world ocean because the pressure as you know the, 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 the very, very first definition of the pressure is the weight of the water column the weight of the water column depends on the density the denser is the, the water column the higher is the, the pressure and so forth then we have a Coriolis force which results from a motion in a rotating coordinate system which is the, uh, the which is another important force which determines uh, uh, some some also very uh, simple solutions of the equations of motion, which are which are very good approximation of the steady motion in the ocean. Then we have a friction, which is uh, uh, as you know from other from other parts of the physics is due to relative motion between two fluid parcels. So but if they did move with different, uh, with different velocity, the, uh, they, they, you have the, the friction between them. And then we stress, which is the, 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 the force at the surface of the ocean is, uh, is an important frictional force, which then causes, generates the motion in the, in the ocean. Then we have other forces, which are atmospheric pressure, which results in an inverted barometer effect. That means the higher is the pressure, the lower is the sea level. For one, uh, for one millibar, there is a, for uh, an increase of one millibar of atmospheric pressure, there is a decrease of the sea level, more or less one centimeter. If it's only due to the to the inverted barometer effect, obviously the the uh, but as you can see also when you have the high pressure in the ocean you can see that the sea level is low obviously the, the relationship one millibar one centimeter is not always uh, it's not always present because it depends on so on other sea level depends also on the water density depends on the currents and so forth then we have seismic forces which results in some tsunamis driven by earthquakes these are these are very limited, uh, limited phenomena, but uh, can can uh, can make a uh, like you have pretty pretty uh, uh, strong damages as you as you have heard uh, many times in the recent uh, recent uh, recent years. One in 2004, for example, this one in uh, in the Indian Ocean, where of the tsunami which has. Uh, which resulted in uh, like uh, 500 or 300,000 people killed and so forth. That, I mean, it's there. That, that, although it says last two forces are much less important than the first three, but from that point of view, certainly has a large impact on us. From the point of view of the general uh, circulation of the, of, the, of, the, of the ocean, is uh, they are of a less important, but can have a quite uh, important uh, consequences to our lives. So now we will uh, try to define the different, uh, different types of the circulation in the ocean. And uh, this is generally, this is generally, uh, this is on one hand, uh, this is uh, uh, associated with the time scale of these, uh, of these motions. If, uh, so if you have the whole uh, spectrum of time scales which are associated with uh, with the with the, with the, with the, with the uh, circulation. So if you have tides, the time scale is order of a day. If you have a general circulation, which is uh, the first point here, is the permanent time average circulation. Then there you have the time scale, which is on the order of uh, of hundreds of years or even thousands of years. 
And uh, so how you obtain this general equation by doing the measurements if you if you are able to do it over a long long period long long enough in order to and do the average and this is kind kind of a this is the general circulation. This is close to something what we call the general circulation, which is the permanent in time average circulation. Then we have uh, the abyssal circulation, which is also called the deep circulation, which is circulation of masses in the meridional plane in the deep ocean driven by mixing. Okay, because the uh, the general circulation. Uh, can uh, is partly also driven by by the by the wind, again, um, average over long term. <coughs> and but because general circulation then has a component important component which is wind driven circulation, which is the circulation in the upper kilometer of the ocean forced by the wind, and the circulation can be caused by local winds or by winds in other regions in a remote. Region. So it's not necessary that you have a local forcing that the wind which blows here generates here the oxygen circulation. You can have the remote forcing of the wind and which causes the circulation in your place here. So, but anyhow, the wind driven circulation can also be steady, can also be uh, time independent, which if it is caused by the by the by steady winds. Then we have gyres, our wind driven cyclonic or anti cyclonic current system, which dimensions nearly that of the ocean basin. Uh, these gyres uh, these are therefore a steady structures which stay in the ocean and uh, can be cyclonic, positive, or anti cyclonic circulation, and they are typically on the dimension of the basin. <coughs> they are they are very important for the the horizontal transport of heat and other and other properties. Uh, uh, what I have I have been talking to you before is the, this exchange of heat between equatorial and polar areas are are uh, taken care by these uh, gyres, which are wind driven cyclonic or anti cyclonic. But uh, general circulation is, on the other hand, also responsible for this, uh, this redistribution of the heat between the north polar and equatorial areas. Then we have boundary currents, which are current parallel to the coast and are along near the coast. And uh, <laughs> these boundary currents are makes part of this uh, typically makes part of these gyres. And you will see later on how these gyres are uh, asymmetric, where on one part of the ocean you have a very strong boundary, western boundary current, and on the other hand you have an eastern boundary current which is relatively weak. This asymmetry can be explained in terms of the, of, of, of the circulation of the ocean in terms of the vorticity, of the vorticity concept. So we have boundary current, we have a western boundary current on the western edge of the ocean tend to be fast, narrow, just such as Gulf Stream, Kuroshio, Eastern Australian current. And, uh, and they, are, they are jet, they are narrow on the order of 100 kilometers. Then we have an eastern boundary current which are very, very weak, which are relatively weak, for example, the California current and also uh, return current in the Atlantic which goes from polar areas along the eastern coast of England uh, goes uh, toward the equator which are relatively wide and, 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 uh, and, uh, and slow they are in kind of, they, they are they are, they, are, uh, um, they are they make part both of them make part of this anti-cyclonic anti-cyclonic gyre for example in that specific case which is which is uh, which is this thing here? A uh, squirts jets are long narrow currents with dimensions of a few hundred kilometers that are nearly perpendicular to west coasts. Uh, the, you know, so now you can see that ha the, the, these features are, in a certain way, separated uh, or distinguished between themselves or distinct between themselves by the time and the landscape attributed to that. Up to here, 
Up to here, we are talking about the semi-permanent semi or permanent general circulation type of, of features. If you go to the to this uh, this stuff here, then we are talking about the smaller scale structures, which are, have uh, their lifetime shorter, which they have their lifetime on the order of uh, of a year or of a month, and the, the length scale are much smaller. Length scale, all these these guys here are of the, of the scale of the of the ocean, while these these two are of smaller. You can see that mesoscale eddies are turbulent or spinning flows on scales of a few hundreds of kilometers in the, in the world ocean. <clears throat> in the Mediterranean or in the Adriatic, they, these, uh, these eddies are shorter, they're smaller, they are on the order of 50 kilometers. So the, the, uh, the, their dimensions are the dictated to a certain extent by, by a dimension of the, to a certain extent, not completely, by the dimension of the basin where they appear. The eddies, they are, they are not fixed. They, they, they do not, they, they do not stay at a certain point. They, are, they, they travel. They travel on the world, in the world ocean. And they, they, for example, in the Atlantic, they live like uh, three, four months. They have, uh, they four, they, uh, they uh, they go and travel and then after some time by friction they are destroyed but the same thing is happening in the atmosphere right in the atmosphere you have the cyclone uh, mid latitude cyclones which are now today we have here a uh, manifestation of the mid latitude cyclones they are huge structures on the order of a thousand kilometers in the atmosphere here is on the order of 100 kilometers on the order of magnitude smaller and they flow the, the, the atmosphere, they go from, uh, from the area of formation, which is above the Atlantic, and flow goes, uh, goes over the, the uh, European continent and goes eastward. And the same thing is happening here. And sometimes these mesoscale eddies are called also weather in the ocean, ocean weather, like in the atmosphere, equivalent to the atmosphere, atmospheric weather, because atmospheric weather is determined by cyclones or anti-cyclone like mesoscale structures in the, in the ocean the, the ocean weather is the, the determined by mesoscale eddies so these are different types of the circulation in the ocean and uh, <coughs> and uh, so now uh, Let's try to, uh, to, to see and uh, to understand the mechanisms which are, uh, which are um, determining or generating the, the, the general circulation of the ocean. Uh, certainly one, uh, certainly the, the important, uh, the important uh, process which is determining the, the general circulation of the ocean is thermohaline circulation. And, and you can see how it looks like this general circulation of the world ocean determined by the, by the, uh, by the uh, cooling and heating, uh, the differential cooling or differential heating between equatorial and polar areas, which gives, uh, gives rise to this, uh, to this uh, meridional circulation from the polar areas to the, to the equator and vice versa. This is the closed, this is the vertical transect, vertical cross section between the polar areas and equatorial regions. And uh, what is essentially here that in the equatorial, in the, in the equatorial subtropical areas, you have the heating, heating, because the heating is stronger than, than cooling. In the uh, polar areas, you have a cooling prevailing over heating. So you have this differential cooling or differential heating between these two areas. What happens is, uh, as we were showing this as an example of the Adriatic, a very simple, very small basin, which has this phenomena, is the cooling of the surface layer. This cooling of the surface layer causes the vertical sinking or vertical mixing in the polar areas because we are cooling the surface, increasing the density of the surface water, which then sinks down and mixes with deeper layers. 
So there, there is a, an area where there is what we call the dense water formation. This dense water then, once sinks, it flows southward and uh, for the for the simple for the simple uh, continuity uh, there is an, an inflow from south to the north in the in the surface layer of this warm warmer uh, water toward the pole so you <laughs> by this differential cooling or differential heating you establish the closed circulation between in the vertical north south circulation cells between polar and equatorial equatorial areas and uh, so this is the, po the position of the of the thermocline and you can see at a certain point at a certain point due to this vertical mixing the thermocline disappears and we have seen this in the vertical distribution of the density and the temperature as i showed you with north south you remember this north south uh, uh, transect between the polar uh, two polar areas across the equator and you can you, you be, we were able to see that there is no thermocline no picnocline in this area here because there is the vertical mixing a bit which destroys that okay so this is the pure thermohaline circulation which then uh, which then results in a uh, general circulation of the ocean and this is this is what what is it this is how how the uh, the global circulation of the world ocean looks like this is a very very schematic uh, global conveyor belt as we call it <laughs> and now we are coming to this uh, we're coming to this uh, to, to this global conveyor belt, which is driven by uh, an engine, which is this dense water formation. So dense water formation is essential in driving the, uh, the, the global circulation of the world ocean. So what is really, so everything, all the engine is, is situated here. There are some, there are some other uh, co-engines, if I may call them which are situated in some other areas, like obviously along the, the uh, Antarctica, where uh, on the shelf of Antarctica there is also cooling, and then dense water formation, which, which comes to the, uh, which reaches this cold, salty, deep water, deep current. So here, essentially, you have a cooling, and then this water goes down, flows over the, uh, over the goes from the Atlantic, goes into the uh, Indian Ocean, goes into the Pacific, and uh, all the all the way along this uh, the upwelling takes place. The upwelling, so that means the the uh, the water becomes more and more warm. It warms because of the contact of the warmer ambient water, becomes lighter and lighter, and then slightly it up wells, wells up, and then comes back to the, uh, to the, uh, because you see, you can see that it's warm, less salty, shallow current. Why is, uh, why is, uh, uh, it's warm because it has warmth along these, uh, along this pathway in contact with the ambient water, and then it comes back to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the area where the, the, all the dense water formation. <laughs> when, uh, this is a very simple uh, picture of the global conveyor belt of the global ocean circulation. And what is what are we interested in is also the, the, the residence time of, of a particle. You know, what happens, how much time it would take, it would take very, in a first approximation, it would take for a particle which stays here and do this entire circle. It would take around 1,000 years. So 1,000 years, more or less, on the order of 1,000 years, is the response or the, um, of the world ocean to the, uh, uh, to, 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 to the changes, to the ambient changes. So if you, if you introduce some changes here, then it would take around 1,000 years in order to, to, 
for entire ocean to respond to these changes completely. Okay? So this is the that important to remember that the heat loss in polar areas is the engine that drives the global conveyor belt. The dry it drives the thermohaline circulation. Thermohaline circulation because it has both ther th temperature and salinity comp component in it, which are due to the uh, to on one hand to the ARC heat losses and on the other hand to different salinity between different parts of the Earth ocean. Excuse me, yeah. Did they apply the picture before the schematic? Uh, yes. Differential heating cooling. We yeah. Get, uh, two cells, right? Oh, you mean the the, the one cell where towards yeah, north? One northward, one southward. Hey. What is the reason why we? Have why it's uh, it's concentrated to the north? Because in the in the north, northern part, you have this this uh, this uh, this heat losses. In the southern part, you don't have such a strong heat losses, and uh, you don't have such a strong vertical vertical mixing. So the the um, the uh, the need to to compensate for the loss of the sea surface water is much stronger here than here. So like because uh, in the south there are no in south there are no such a strong dense water formation processes. The uh, here you have. Uh, like uh, the depth of uh, on the order of a uh, thousand meters, the situation, meteorological climatic situation are such that the dense water formation is much stronger <coughs> there than than in the north. Okay. <coughs> good, good observation. Okay, so uh, obviously the the situation is not so simple, and uh, we have the whole. Uh, the whole uh, series of uh, of complication in our very simple system with this uh, nice uh, nice presentation, and one of the thing is the western uh, western intensification. This western in intensification is, uh, in this specific case, is the, uh, the 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 Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is the western boundary current in the Atlantic Ocean, which makes part of this this anticyclonic. Uh, Large anticyclonic gyre, and you can see that this uh, this is the uh, this is the picture the scheme of the of the uh, of the Gulf Stream, which is not a simple uh, which is not a simple uh, uh, river in the ocean. It is rather complicated shape and rather complicated structure. And uh, what is Interesting and impressive is that it takes like a 30 million cubic meter per second of the water from north to south. 30 million. To give you an idea how big is this number, the biggest river, as I told you before, is uh, like 100,000 meter per, sec per second. And here is a 30 million, is the, the amount of water which is brought from Gulf of Mexico to where the uh, Toward the uh, toward the uh, uh, North Atlantic England and so forth, the, these uh, these measurements of this uh, three thirty thousand uh, meter kilometer uh, meter cubic per sec thirty million meter cubic per second was done more or less here. This is the this is the Florida coast. So uh, these are pretty pretty attainable, pretty uh, realistic numbers. And uh, as I told you, there are some uh, some complications in the system, not only in a uh, north-south circulation, but also in the Gulf Stream or Western Boundary Current itself. It shows a series of meanders. Meanders are these, uh, and there is a counter current along the coast, which is the uh, which is the cold water which flows southward. <coughs> there is the formation of these uh, <coughs> of these. Uh, these uh, eddies you can see both on the coastal side and the open side. One is called, uh, these are called eddies and these are called rings, cold water rings, but essentially they are mesoscale features which are due to the instability along this, uh, this, uh, this, this current. The same thing happens with, uh, uh, again I would like to uh, make the, the comparison with whatever is happening in the atmosphere 
you know that uh, mid-latitude cyclones are formed along the, the polar front, subpolar front. So in the instability of the subpolar front generates uh, ends up in, in results in a generating of the of the mid-latitude cyclones. And the same thing is happening here. And you can see these these uh, meanders, which then increase in their amplitude and finally end up in the formation of these mesoscale features. Okay? And uh, what, what the, the, the important role of these features, they, it has been shown very recently that the, these, uh, these features have a very important role in uh, transporting horizontally the properties of the seawater. There is a recent, uh, a recent theory which uh, makes, uh, um, uh, like four or five years ago, there is a paper what, uh, uh, what has been published where uh, there is a um, uh, similarity between the black holes and, and eddies because whatever enters into the eddy doesn't, doesn't leave it, uh, like in black holes. And so some part of the theory of black holes can be, can be applied to, to, these, uh, to these eddies and to the, what, what they do uh, as far as the transport of the of the properties of the of the seawater, the uh, these eddies, uh, since they once they um, they trap the properties, they trap uh, the pollution pollutants, they trap the plastics, they trap the organism, they trap the heat, uh, the salinity. They can play the role also in a, in a, in a, for example climate change. If you have the, if you have the the, the, the the eddy which is formed in the equatorial area, uh, it can it brings the redistributes the heat itself over the world ocean, and not only these uh, general circulation, but also the eddies becomes more, they, it's more and more appreciated that they are important role in redistributing the properties over the world ocean. <laughs> Professor, yeah. What is about the how deep is? Yes. Oh, it can go to uh, on the order of a thousand meters, a couple of thousand meters. It's a, uh, it's a huge, you know, it's like a, like a tube. They are pretty, uh, they are pretty, pretty deep. Uh, they are determined also to a certain extent also to, 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 uh, to um, they are associated to the depth to the, the thickness of the layer where, where they, they are generated. You know, we will see now that the Gulf Stream is on the order of 500 meters. So the eddies which are formed along the, 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 uh, the, the, the front of the, of, the, of the Gulf Stream should be on that, uh, on that, uh, on that depth. Hey, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the SST uh, picture of uh, one uh, one uh, snapshot about the Gulf Stream and uh, the the re more red reddish area and the reddish color means the warmer and uh, greenish or bluish means cold and uh, so you can follow the uh, this is Cuba this is Florida this is the Gulf uh, of Mexico and this is how why the the, the, the Gulf Stream is called the Gulf Stream because it's it it's originates from the Gulf of Mexico, <coughs> exits into the uh, into the uh, Atlantic, flows along the uh, the coast of Florida, becomes Florida current, and then after that becomes the Gulf Stream, and then flows northward, crosses the the Atlantic around the Cape Cod, crosses leaves the the American continent and flows into the toward the, the Europe. This is one thing. The other thing is what is interesting is that these features can be clearly seen on this uh, on this uh, on this satellite image. You can see that uh, at least one, two, three mesoscale mesoscale eddies which are on the right hand side. You have a you have you can see the strong instability which which eventually would uh, result in a uh, in a formation of another of other eddies, and you can see this tongue of warm water which protrudes 
toward the European continent, continent and toward the, the England. The, uh, the fact that this is cold, warmer than, uh, they are much warmer than, than the ambient water. Unfortunately, there is no, uh, no temperature scale, but uh, uh, the fact is that it influences uh, to a large extent the climate. And the, uh, so that's why, that's why if, you, if you compare, for example, this, this coast at the same latitude, which is Canadian coast, with the England coast, which on the other side, which is, uh, which is reached by the Gulf Stream, you can see that the uh, important difference in the climate, where you know, on the Canada coast is very cold because of this, uh, this cold Labrador current here, yeah. while on the other hand, because of the Gulf Stream, or, uh, or I don't know how they, they call it there, the, 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 the climate is much warmer. Okay. So this is the this is one of the examples of the components of this uh, this global circulation of the world ocean. <clears throat> Here is the uh, we zoomed we zoomed the, uh, uh, the, the the circulation to the specific area where the dense water formation takes place. This is the uh, this is again uh, this is the previous it was uh, Gulf Stream. It becomes North Atlantic Current. Then you can see it changes the name into the Norwegian Current there because it flows along the Norwegian coast. This is the Angle England. This is the uh, that's the uh, what is this? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And uh, you can see that uh, that the, the how this cross the <coughs> the ocean reaches the coast of England and uh, Norwegian. And then, which and this is you can see why these two uh, these two coasts are so different from the point of view of the climate. <coughs> there is this whole system of currents, and you can see this is the main area where the dense water formation takes place. We will uh, <coughs> and why so? There are number of features which has to be number of uh, of um, ingredients which has to be there in order have to be there in order to uh, to generate the vertical mixing and dense water formation. <coughs> One of the things is certainly the uh, the, the, the the presence or the the the, uh, the appearance of the cold winds because what the cold winds do they do they they do they cool the surface by evaporation and by by uh, <coughs> direct contact with the with the sea surface they are cooled the surface <coughs> increasing the, the density of the, de of the sea water sea surface water and causes the vertical same thinking <coughs> already <coughs> at the at the surface you can see that there is a northward or eastward here North Atlantic current, and then there is a return cold current here, which guarantee the, uh, the, 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 the continuity of water volume from the equation of continuity. If I, uh, I say. Okay, so this is the, we will come back to this picture later on when we, okay, ah, okay, now we can, we can now just already talk about the, <coughs> Uh, some some of the things what is what are necess necessary ingredient for for dense water formation. Okay, the necessary ingredient for dense water formation is what we call preconditioning. Okay, so uh, we will see later, and I I will now anticipate uh, the the thing, and we will uh, uh, make this uh, in a more more uh, systematic way. This is the sea surface. If we have uh, the cyclonic circulation, so that means this type of circulation. What happens with the with the isopycnons? Isopycnons are in the ocean, are are made like this. These are the isopycnons, the lines, the surfaces of equal density. They are they are they have of this shape because in there we have the circulation like this in the surface okay so 
in the preconditioning, which is the phase before the dense water formation takes place, we have to have this kind of circulation. We have to have a cyclonic circulation. So this is one of the criteria by which we can uh, identify possible uh, areas where the dense water formation takes place. Don't worry, we will come back to the to the cyclonic and anti-cyclonic circulation and relationship with the, with the internal density field later on. But now let's uh, concentrate on the dense water formation process. So this is a, one of the necessary conditions in order to dense water formation takes place. Why? Because if you if you cool this surface. So you are taking taking away the heat from the sea surface. <coughs> the isopic these are this is the rho plus one. This is rho. Oh sorry, <laughs> no, it's not rho plus one. This is rho plus one and this is rho plus two. So the, the density obviously increases in that way. In this specific area where there is a cyclonic circulation. The, the, the densest water is close, is clo the densest water is closest to the surface. Therefore, in order to create the vertical mixing, it's much easier to to mix here than here. Okay, because here the uh, the, the the dense water is much closer to the surface. So, uh, so this is why uh, the 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 the, the uh, preconditioning phase. We have to have the dense water formation. The, the, we have to have the cyclonic circulation. Okay, so what is happening then? Then, in a certain moment, the, the wind comes into the place. So we have to have the the uh, the second ingredient. We have to have the the break outbreaks of the continental cold air, which will. Uh, take away the heat from the sea surface, which will decrease the temperature of the sea surface and increase the density of the surface. But not, not only that, if you have the continental air coming over the, uh, over the sea, the continental air is characterized by low, low, uh, uh, low humidity. It's very dry wind. So it will increase, in addition, it will increase salinity, increase the, uh, the evaporation and increase the salinity. So by two ways, it will increase the density of this surface water here. <coughs> and then as a result of that, there will be uh, this vertical mixing in the center of this cyclonic circulation. You, you, this is the cross section here, and this is how the surface looks like. So the uh, so the there will be and uh, finally in a certain after certain uh, period of time oops, there will be this way the iso okay the isopycnon will cross will uh, will uh, cut the surface will. Uh, and then you will be in a, you will have in the center of the cyclonic circulation, you will have the vertical mixing. And then the surface, a relatively dense water, denser water than the deeper water, will sink down. This is how this vertical sinking appears in, uh, in, in, in the ocean. So therefore, you have to have these, uh, these, uh, these, um, uh, these uh, ingredients in order to get the uh, why is uh, why is uh, the this area is uh, an area of this water formation if you look at the surface circulation you can see that it's cyclonic you can see the whole number of C is uh, covered by a cyclonic circulation basin wise cyclonic circulation therefore that means that if you look into the density structure in the in the Labrador Sea, you will have you will see that that there is a the shape bell shape of the isopycnons, which brings the saltier water closer to the surface. So the only thing what is now 
has to uh, uh, happen is the, the winds blowing from the Greenland or, or from the Labrador, which are, which are bringing the cold air, cold and dry air over the, over the, the, over the, the ocean, and will, which will cause the vertical, vertical mixing. So the huge, huge amount of dense water is, is formed there. If you go back to, to, the, to the situation where what I showed you in the Adriatic is the, the very, very similar thing. In the Adriatic, where there is a dense water formation, which is southern Adriatic, where I show you this transit, there is a cyclonic circulation. There is a cyclonic gyre present there. And these cyclonic gyres guarantee the, the, the guarantee, guarantees the, uh, the, uh, the presence of the dense water closer to the surface in its center. And that's enough to, to have the, the outbreaks of the, dent, of the cold air from the continent, which is in, in our case is Bura or Bora, you have heard for this, and you have you will experience it if you have not, which then causes this uh, surface heat losses and surface evaporation, and then vertical vertical mixing. So this is this is how it looks like, and uh, uh, so this is the final uh, this is the final. Uh, uh, pattern when the whole water column up to a certain depth is vertically mixed. You, see, you can see that there are no, no isopycnals in this central part of the cyclones. The isopycnals are upward here and then at the surface you can see this kind of structure. You can he see more or less the circular structure but with a series of the formations, these are these are instabilities along the uh, the cyclone, which then uh, eventually uh, uh, eventually uh, dis de destroys this uh, this uh, this uh, this, uh, this structure at least at the surface, and then closes this thing, and it's not anymore open toward the the sea surface. So this is how it looks like in a uh, in a very schematic presentation, and from the sur if you look at the from the surface, what you what are the features of this uh, of this uh, dense water formation or dense water eddy, which is this thing here, in the situation in a, which is on the order of a 50 or 100 kilometers, it depends where you are. But then you have a series of these small plumes, what they call it plumes, which are which are these uh, these uh, these uh, uh, small areas where you have a violent sinking because of the of the cooling, and you have also uh, eddies on the order of 10 kilometers, which are present there, which are due to these instabilities uh, along the the, the 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 front of the. Uh, of this uh, dense water formation, <coughs> uh, shaded area is the, the the fluid which is vertically mixed. So this is the this huge thing is the is the is the vertically mixed area. It used to be called uh, before a uh, chimney because in chimney you have the same thing, but the with, with the negative with the negative sign you have the vertical mixing in the chimney from bottom to top, and here is from the surface to deeper layers. <coughs> so, now here it is the uh, circulation schematic showing the cyclonic circulation and preconditioning in the Labrador Sea convection regime. And, uh, and uh, what you can see is the, uh, this is essentially what I already showed you. This is the prevalence of this, uh, of this cyclonic circulation, which covers the huge, this huge area. <coughs> this is, for example, the one convection which is observed in 1978. <coughs> but this is, uh, obviously, it's not, uh, the, the convection is not always, doesn't occupy always the same area. It depends on how strong are winds, how uh, uh, how cold are winds, 
uh, how, how, how strong is the, the, the eddy or the cyclone circulation and this, all these kind of stuff. <clears throat> Therefore, there is obviously, as I showed you also on the example of the Adriatic, there are <coughs> strong interannual and uh, decadal variability of the amount of this water which is formed. But essentially, those are the prevalent areas or uh, uh, where the dense water is formed if you have present all these, uh, these uh <coughs> okay, I think I will stop here <coughs> <coughs> and uh, have a good weekend and uh, I have to press the button <coughs> <coughs>